That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Three Christs, directed by John Abnett and premiering, uh, well, uh, being released in theaters on January 3rd, 2020 by IFC Films. So. I had to have a couple of glasses of wine this to was finish a, this film. This is a painful film to sit through. But uh, let's start with the fact that it premiered at the 2017 Toronto International Film Festival, and now here we are, over three years later. Uh, it's getting theatrical theatrical release um, three days into the new year, most likely because I think by the time next year's Razzies come around, people will have forgotten about the film because this deserves some of those. So, oh. directed by whom? John Avnet, who was, um, in the 90s, quite a big deal. He did such, uh, I don't know if you call them classics, but Fried Green Tomatoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, he did a previous film starring Richard Gere called Red Corner, which I, I remember seeing that. Okay. Um, Up Close and Personal with Michelle Pfeiffer and Robert Redford was a big deal. Okay. I remember as a child. And uh, then in the late 2000s, things got, started getting a little uh, troublesome, I think, for Mr. Avnet. He did 88 Minutes with Al Pacino, and then he reunited uh, De Niro and Pacino for the first time since Heat with uh, Wretch's Kill in 2008, which was not well received. And that was his last theatrical feature before this. He's been working in a, a lot of higher profile television series since then. This story so is based... Uh, so it's based on an actual uh, psychological case study from 1964, um, and this film is adapted by Milton Rockeach's Three Christs of Ypsilanti. Was that a book? Yeah, that was the, the oh. book that it's based on, but it's actu an actual case study that was published in 1964. So a psychiatrist played by Richard Gere is uh, brought to like a psych psychiatric facility where he is going to study three patients who all believe they are our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Michigan. In Michigan, because mm -hmm. that's where Jesus would go. Uh, and the film opens by telling us that in the 1950s, um, all the ways that were popular to treat um, patients in state hospitals, which were, you know, antipsychotics, electroshock therapy, sure. blah, 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 and rarely psychotherapy. So his mission is to introduce <laughs> more effective ways to treat patients and not patients and not just sedate them and mm -hmm. subdue them. So, you know, I think the, the source material is probably quite fascinating um, and empathetic, but mm -hmm. this movie and I try to not be so negative, but this movie is cock a doo doo. It is cock a doo doo. Eric Nazarian's screenplay is. Uh, it... First off, it features some really talented people, or notable people, like Richard Gere. Richard Gere, who is, you know, he does what he can with it. I wasn't so annoyed by him, but the, the way that. But what? Who else? Richard Gere. Walton Goggins is one of the Christs. Okay. Uh, Peter Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. Uh, Who's the lady from. Bradley Whitford is the other Christ. Bradley Whitford. Uh, Who's his wife, Richard Gere's Juliana wife? Juliana Margulies. Who, you know, I think with, like, I think she's still beautiful. I, I like seeing her. Who's Richard Gere's boss? Uh, Kevin, oh, Stephen Root. Stephen Root and Bradley Whitford were both in Get Out. Uh, and, and then Kevin Pollock uh, is the, the evil doctor that tries to Shanghai his... Uh, so it has a pretty impressive it, cast. It does have an impressive cast, yeah. Um, um, and then you have Denis Lenoir is the DP who did... Um, my favorite Asai, Olivia Asayas film, uh, Demon Lover, he did Wasp Network. Um, the look of the film is not the problem. Uh, Jeff Russo's score was a little much, but... Uh, I don't know where to begin, and I don't know that it's worth getting too crazy you know, into it, I was, except that I think what was so problematic was the characterization of the patients, the three yes, psychiatric yes. patients, is... I think borderline disrespectful. It really does. I understand that during this, the, the film is set in the 50s. Mm -hmm. During that time, our knowledge of psychiatric health and, 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 and disease was archaic compared to what we understand now. Sure. Sure. But the depiction, this film was made in what, 2016, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. 2017, is just so, it's like a caricature of what we consider people who are crazy or have oh. schizophrenia, suffer from schizophrenia. 
I, I think it's offensive. I think Peter Dinklage and Bradley Whitford are should are, are deserving of Razzie nods in this. I will say, Peter Dinklage in particular, oh, oh. he really did give them what I mean. They got their money's worth with him because he is trying. He's acting really hard, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just embarrassing. So embarrassing. I wanted. I kept. What did I say when we were watching this? It should be called Christ, Christ, Christ. Uh, or Christ Cube. Christ Cube. Christ Cube. Or I thought of that. Remember that movie in the late nineties, Why Do Fools Fall in Love? We with, have uh, with Halle Berry. Yes, um, and Vivica A. Fox. And Vivica A. Fox. And who's the other one? La Layla Rashawn. Layla Rashawn. But but the, the and, and the love interest is who? Uh, Lawrence Tate. Lawrence Tate. Yeah. Lawrence but I remember the preview is like a clip of each of those women saying, "I'm Mrs. Frankie Lyman." <laughs> That, I'd rather watch that. I would rather watch that again. I also thought of M. Night Shyamalan's Glass. We'll have the fucking sitting around and yes, talking. Yes, well, the three of them are in the... In Jesus the, yeah, Christ. Retreat. Pun intended. Um, and also, um, the, the, Stephen Root, who played Richard Gere's boss, the, his characterization... You know, one of my favorite films of all time is Suddenly Last Summer. Mm -hmm. And Albert Decker, a character actor in that, who's Monty Cliff's boss, is very very similar to whatever Stephen Root is doing in this even to how he looks by the way so side note for when you put together all the photos Albert Decker something last summer okay noted uh-huh oh and all the chair creaking there was so much oh god like cuz you know they're sitting in all those wooden chairs I was just I was just you heard me I was making I was groaning through the whole thing it was hard to see it through. feels very um <sighs> I don't know another word except cheap. It it did feel it, schmaltzy, cheap. Um, like a lifetime movie that isn't campy or fun. <laughs> like there, there's just nothing about it that's appealing. And I know it's inappropriate to make light of the you know sort of the conditions these people are suffering with. But that's not even present. It's just a, oh, like 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 a poorly executed, the, dated narrative right. of like people dealing with this issue. Everything's cliche. Charlotte Hope who's a, a Game of Thrones alum with Peter Dinklage, stars as Richard Gere's comely assistant. And there are so many, all of the, um, Walton Goggins character wants is very, uh, kind of obsessed with her vagina, as is made clear. And I, I just don't think this screenplay is up to par with kind of passing that off without making everyone giggle. Like he talks about, like I had to write it down, like squirting emissions into her squirrel chamber. <laughs> It's I just know. like, oh, if I, like, it, it just seems like if someone had to write something about people who are crazy and, like, the crazy shit they would say. And granted, they're probably taking, I'd imagine, they're taking from the actual case study. Sure. Uh, but, but they just didn't manage to finesse that in any kind of way. And I remember their grumblings about this at TIFF in 2017. Um, it just feels so I, low budget. I obviously didn't make time to see it then. Um, this might be one of... I mean, you know, 2019 is going to end in five days. Mm -hmm. I think this might be one of the worst films I've seen. In a long time. That isn't, like, like there's, it's not fun, it's not... I mean, there, there are no redeeming qualities. There, there's not one. I kept thinking, also, I would have rather rewatched Cats back-to-back -back than... I usually try to find something good, and I cannot find anything good about this film. Uh, I think Peter Dinklage is attractive, though. <laughs> he, he's attractive, although yeah. sometimes so he that's looked, a plus. Uh, sometimes he looked like a sad dog, with <laughs> styled in this, and they give him. He has a British accent. He he's, does the best job, partially because his character like kills himself. Well, he's spoiler. also the most flamboyant. Of yes, the three. so he is, I think, the hardest working of everyone in the film, uh, and has probably the only moments where I felt bad, like when he confronts Richard Gere's. Like the head of the psychiatric ward, Kevin Pollock. Yes, when he confronts yeah. him, and, and a, that that was a. Who, by the way, Kevin Pollock looked like he, I wrote down like a bloated frog slash um, Paul Rubens as Pee Wee Herman. He, he didn't look good. Well, not to be mean. Yeah, I, not to mean, be that's mean. mean, but not he looks, to be mean because really, I don't think. I don't think it's the fault of the people on board. I think this film. I think they all signed on. Mm -hmm. Maybe like. 
the director is notable and then they got Richard Gere and then all of a sudden you have Peter Dinklage and all these like notable people and they think they're doing something big and it, it was and then it didn't come together. You can't fault any of them really but no. they, you know they're they're all above this material mm -hmm. and how they were directed. Even Juliana Margulies and her the tangent about I was once my husband's assistant and it's very intimate working with him and like yeah, there's kind of like a like a divergent sort of insinuation that he might be having an affair or it could lead to an affair. But why? It's pointless. It is pointless, yeah. I do so we need to wrap this up. I think this film I would give it like half a star out of five. Which is yeah, it's which a, is the lowest it is a cat's star. level. It uh it yeah. is half a star out of five. But. I do think that this story would work well um on stage as a play, like a stage play. I think it's it still could work well as a film with somebody that's actually willing to be gritty and realistic. Yeah, that was like the cleanest, nicest psychiatric ward. And not that they don't exist, but I think for that era and then the, the juxtaposition of like the archaic treatment methods versus like, it's so like many, nice and clean and the staff is friendly and, and the main orderly, this black man. Um, oh, I don't know his name. But. His acting wasn't the best, but I thought his characterization was very... He had um, a good singing voice. <laughs> he seemed like a sweet man. It just is like, it, it doesn't fit with, you know, the poor treatment that Richard Gere's character is, you know, alleging and, mm -hmm. and fighting mm -hmm. against. Mm -hmm. the, we, the tone is off. We seem like, that, like this needed to be... Um, Ken Kesey's, uh, Kesey, what, what, the, the man who wrote One Flow of the Cuckoo's Nest. Like, it, it, I need, this needs to have that kind of a tone. It needs to... It's so far from that. I don't know. This, it is, is this is more like... Throw it away tone. and start again. Anyway, I give it half a star. What would you give it? Uh, half a star, yes. All right. Bye. Bye.